All right, so we're gonna move on and talk about not just logarithms, but properties of logarithms. And these are properties that will help us simplify some of the more complicated expressions that we've already seen and the ones that we're going to be seeing pretty soon. So a lot of these properties go back to those properties that we have with exponents. So there's a very strong connection because the logarithm is strongly connected to, the, uh, to exponents. So here, if you have a product inside of a logarithm, you can split this up into two separate logarithms. So the multiplication inside will become the sum of two separate logarithms. If you have division, that division becomes subtraction. And if you have a power inside, this power gets to come right outside in front as a, as a factor with log base A of x. So, what we're going to do is we're going to run through just a few examples of expanding some logarithmic expressions using these properties of logarithms. So let's take a look. Now some of these can be quite easy to do as long as you pay attention to where your uh, terms are, where your factors are, and what the powers are. For example, let's take this. If I say log base 2 of a to the third over b to the tenth. All right. First of all, we need to understand that we have division here. So that applies, or that goes back to the second rule that we have. So we can rewrite this and say that this is log base 2 of a to the third minus log base 2 of b to the 10th. So that's the first part, is to rewrite the quotient inside the logarithm and turn that into the difference of the two logs. But we're not done. We want to completely expand this. And so now we want to look at this third property that says if you have a power inside the logarithm, you can just bring that out front um, as a factor. So that means that we can take this power of 3, bring it out front, then we can do the same thing with this power of 10, bring it out in front of its respective logarithm. And so now we have 3 times log base 2 of a minus 10 times log base 2 of b. And uh, there you have it. This guy is completely expanded now. Now I want you to see a slightly different way of looking at this, a way that can maybe help us save some time for some of the expressions that we're going to be seeing a little bit later. So here is another way of seeing this expression. You know, and I'm not going to write the base, so I just want you to see that um, the base is important, but sometimes you see logarithms that don't have a base explicitly written. And we're going to talk about what that means here in just a video or two. So since this guy's in the denominator, I want you to remember that what we've seen so far is that if something's in the denominator, that's because it had a negative power. So I can rewrite this as log of a to the third times b to the negative tenth. And in this case, we can separate this and say this is log of a to the third plus, because this is a product in here, log of b to the negative tenth. And now we can apply that property where we get to pull the, the power out in front. So this is 3 times log of a, this becomes negative 10 times the log of b, right? And so it's the same thing that we had above, except I was just ignoring the, you know, the base, and I was just doing what's called the common logarithm, which we'll get to later. So anyway, let's try another example, all right? And so in this next, we're going to see something called natural log, okay? And the natural log is a log that has an understood base 
of E. So again, we're going to talk about that in, uh, in the coming videos. So I need to expand this, and I hope that you can start to see there's going to be a pattern here. Anything that's in the denominator is going to become subtraction like I saw here and like I saw here. Anything that's in the numerator is going to be positive whenever we rewrite this. So if I just had this piece right here, we could rewrite this to say 2 times the natural log of p, right? So I'm bringing out the power in front. And these guys, I'd also want to bring the power out in front for their respective logs as I rewrite them. But since they're in the denominator, this becomes minus 7 times the natural log of r minus 3 times the natural log of s. And you have this completely expanded. And, and we're done. There's not anything else that we need to do for that. Now, as a, as a little side note, um, another way that you may see this done, say, in the textbook or in my math lab, is that they will rewrite this and say, this is the natural log of p squared minus the natural log of r to the seventh, s to the third. And you can totally do that. The only problem is that when we get here and we see this product, students tend to put their signs in the wrong spot. See, so you're subtracting we're subtracting this whole guy right here, which means we need to have big brackets or grouping symbols, parentheses, whatever, to say the natural log of r to the seventh plus the natural log of s to the third. So by writing it this way, we can see that this negative is going to affect whatever we do for these guys. So naturally, this guy, you bring the 2 out in front, so it becomes 2 natural log of p. You bring the 7 in front of this, so negative times the 7 gives you this. You bring the 3 in front, but there's still a negative that applies to that, so that'd be negative 3 natural log of s. But I think the more of these you do, the easier it is for you to go from here straight to here. Any factor that's coming from the denominator means it has a negative power, which is why we have the negative coefficient written in front. All right, let's do one more. So let's do log of the seventh root of x times the cube root of q squared. All right, since we have a product inside the log, that means this will, uh, this will break up into the sum of the two smaller logs. So log of the seventh root of x plus a separate log, log of the cube root of q squared. All right. Well, I've got to finish expanding this. That means I'm not supposed to have any powers or any radicals inside um, the logarithms. Well, we've spent a lot of time talking about exponentials and how we can rewrite and convert between exponentials and even radicals, right? So I can rewrite this to be x to the 1 7th power. Remember, the index becomes the denominator of your power. And then plus, over here, this is going to be log of... This is already q squared, so it's q squared but then divided by 3 because you have to divide by the index. Again, the index is the denominator of your power. And then in our final step, you write the power out in front. So we can say 1 7th times the log of x plus 2 thirds times the log of q. Uh, one of the things to keep in mind here is that log uh, natural log, those guys are never by themselves. They are functions, and there's always going to be some kind of input value. It's just like you never see a square root symbol by itself. There's always something inside of it because it's a function. All right, so this is how we expand logarithms. In the next video, we're going to go backwards. We're going to take expressions like this and go into a single logarithmic expression.